Hey guys, and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And if you've ever been frustrated by pictures that you thought were in focus, then turned out blurry when you looked at them later, then this is the video for you. We are gonna give you a few tips on how to nail your focus every time, as well as two camera settings that you just have no idea about and are gonna make your life so much easier. So let's jump in. So when you pick up a new camera for the first time, whether it is an entry level DSLR or a high end mirrorless camera, by default, basically your settings are going to be on auto everything. Your exposure will be set to auto mode, your focus will be on autofocus, and even where in an image you're focusing is going to be set on auto. Mm -hmm. And when you're taking your very first images with a new camera, that's totally okay. Get used to the feel of the camera and composing shots and let the camera kind of like do the thinking for you. But pretty soon, you're gonna find that your camera just isn't that smart. And honestly, within a few months of seriously messing around with photography, you're gonna end up being smarter than your camera when it comes to how to take your imagery. And so that's when you wanna start shifting some of those automatic features into manual mode. Now, if you wanna learn how to shoot in manual mode, which is another way of saying setting your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to manually set the exposure for your camera, then we have a whole video series just for you, all about shooting in manual, and you can check out that playlist here. But one of the things that you're gonna to wanna to do pretty soon is start telling your camera where it should be focusing, rather than letting it just sort of take its best guess at who or what the subject of your image is. Yeah, because like we said, your camera's kinda of dumb <laughs> and will sometimes focus on your background when what you really want is your subject in focus or maybe it'll focus on like someone's back and leave the face of the other person out of focus. Either way, one of the most important factors in getting your images in focus every single time is making sure that you are the one telling your camera where it should be focusing, not the other way around. Now, real quick, I just want to like pause here and make sure that we aren't going to be misunderstood. When we're talking about this, I want you to hear this. We are not, not absolutely not suggesting mm -hmm. that you should turn off autofocus and manually focus your lens. And to be clear, manual focusing your lens is when you literally turn off the autofocus feature and turn the focus ring on your lens until the image looks in focus to your eye, whether you're using your viewfinder or the built-in LCD screen. Do not do that. Keep your camera on autofocus. Yeah. But here is the problem. No matter how in focus your subject might look on this little like half inch viewfinder or on your like four inch LCD screen, there's probably like a 50-50 chance that when you download the images onto your computer and look at them like blown up full size, you are gonna realize that you, you missed the focus. Mm -hmm. Your subjects will either be like a little soft or just blurry completely. Now, if you're using some very old lenses with a digital camera, or if you're shooting with like an old school film camera, you might not have a choice and manual focus might be the only way forward, but trust us, as people who shoot uh, weddings with both high-end digital cameras and some old school film cameras, there is literally nothing more frustrating than getting your film scans back, you know, a few weeks after a wedding or an engagement session, only to find that the composure and, and the uh, posing and the exposure and the colors, basically everything is perfect and you thought you nailed it, only to find that the focus you thought was good is actually bad and your subjects are blurry and the image is basically useless. Yeah, seriously, it is completely heartbreaking to see that, which is why we recommend that photographers always always mm -hmm. use autofocus when it's available. However, we are saying that you should be the one telling your camera what part of the image it should be autofocusing on. Here's what we mean by that. When you first turn on your camera, you might see something like this if you have a DSLR. Each of these little gray rectangles are a point that your camera could potentially focus on. Now, if your camera is set to the default settings, when you halfway press down on the shutter release button, so when you go to focus your image, it's probably going to look something like this. All of these red dots are the part of the image that your uh, camera has decided it is going to autofocus on. And the thing is, sometimes your camera is going to guess correctly and know where to focus like it did in that example but other times it's going to guess wrong and your autofocus will correctly focus, but on the wrong subject like it does here. 
if these were the focus points that our camera decided to focus on, the hand and the leg of the guy in the white shirt would be in focus, but the face and torso of the guy in the gray shirt would be out of focus. And in this image, the guy in the gray shirt is our actual subject. And now, of course, hopefully at this point you're realizing that if you shoot weddings, events, sports, lifestyle, really anything that isn't just like a stationary, non-moving portrait that you have 100% full control over, if you shoot anything else, this can be a huge problem because missing focus isn't like missing your exposure. If you're off by a stop from your exposure, you can usually fix that in post. But usually if you miss focus, the photo is unusable and just cannot be recovered. Yeah, And that is why Hunter and I always tell our camera which point it should be auto focusing on. Mm -hmm. So rather than letting the camera guess at what our subject maybe is and just hoping for a good result like this, we turn our cameras to single point auto focus and manually use the directional pad on the back of our camera to select a single spot in the image where our camera should focus. That way we never have to worry about our camera guessing at the wrong focal point. Instead, we're going to use this little directional pad on the back of our camera to tell it exactly where to focus, then let our autofocus do the work. Mm -hmm. Now, we realize that in more advanced cameras, including the mirrorless Z6-2s that we use every single time we photograph a wedding or an engagement session, there are a ton of fancy AI-powered features like eye detection where you can give the general region of the image and let it focus on whatever eyes are inside the range. But again, you are allowing your camera some latitude to guess at what you want, and we'd rather have full control even if it means we have to manually navigate that square around the screen. And we know we might be some of the only people who feel that way, but for us, we would just rather have the control. Now, here is sort of an sort of related, but sort of unrelated um, tip that we learned really early on in our photography journey about focus. And this one is especially important for any DSLR shooters out there who um, have a much more limited set of focal points. Now, going back to some of the images we showed earlier, one thing you might notice is, um, and this is true uh, specifically for the Nikon cameras that we're showing, but this is you know generally true for all of uh, DSLR versus mirrorless cameras that DSLR is going to have a fairly limited set of focal points. I know it's only 51 for most Nikon DSLRs and they're always going to be in the middle like 20-ish percent of the screen and sort of on the other hand compare that to mirrorless cameras where you're going to have you know two or three hundred focal points that cover basically the entire screen. So what do you do if you're shooting with a DSLR and your subject is outside of that limited focal area? Well you have to aim focus, and then recompose your image using something called back button focusing. So by default, just about every DSLR mirrorless camera that you pick up is going to have the focus and the shutter release combined into a single button. So if you press your shutter release button halfway down, that's going to focus your image and then you press it all the way down and that is going to actually take the image. Now what back button focusing does is it actually separates those two functions into two separate buttons. And so you focus with one button, in the case of Nikon shooters, it's usually the AF on button, and then you actually shoot with another button. Now, this gives you more control over how and when you focus compared to when you actually take the image. And we are not gonna get into like the technical setup of back button focus because it's gonna be different with every single camera. On our Nikon cameras, you have to find the controls part of your settings and tell your autofocus on button to control focus. But if you just Google back button focus along with your camera model, you should be able to find an easy tutorial for turning it on. Now, once you turn it on, here's how your camera actually works. Once you have selected your focus button, you know, using your thumb kind of on this little, this little, uh, I forget what you call it's it. It's like, like a, a remote control. Yeah, it's like a navigate. It's almost like a joystick, like a little navigational thing. Um, once you've selected where in your viewfinder you want your focus point, all you do is you press the AF on button, this button in the back of your camera, and that will actually tell your lens to start doing its automatic autofocusing thing. Once it's in focus, you press your actual shutter release button, and that's how you take the actual image. And why is this helpful? Well, let's say that you want to compose your image that your subject, your focal point, was outside of your DSLR's range, or the focal range. Keep in mind, your DSLR can only focus on something that's in the middle 20% of your image. So what you can do is point your camera so that your subject falls within this kind of middle 20%, use your back button focus to get a perfect focus on your subject, and then just recompose your image so that your subject is at the edge of your frame where you want them, then you click the shutter. 
So without back button focus, what would happen is you would maybe uh, recompose your image, halfway depress the shutter, it would focus on your subject, and then as you recompose your image, it's gonna keep focusing and it's gonna grab something that you don't want. So maybe it's gonna grab the wrong subject, maybe it's gonna grab your background. And so in order to take the picture, it's basically always going to be focusing right before you click the shutter. And you don't always want that because again, remember, focusing on the wrong subject is just, it can often ruin the shot completely. It's a no-go. Yeah. And whether you're shooting with DSLR or mirrorless back button focus also allows you to shoot the occasional image that's intentionally out of focus like this one without having to switch back and forth between manual and autofocus on your lens. And at the end of the day, honestly, we just prefer the feeling of focusing with one button uh, when and where we want and then actually taking the image with a different button. And again, once you start to get the hang of using your camera, the less you let it do on its own, the better. But that's it for this week. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want more great content and advice for learning to take better images and running a successful photography business, we'd really encourage you to join our Facebook community, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz. In that group, we are building a free community of other photographers who are also building their photography businesses and helping each other out along the way. And of course, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all those good algorithm things if you do have any questions or if you just want to show us some support. Bye. See you next week.